Welcome to where time stands still. No one leaves and no one will. Welcome to tyranny. Welcome to bondage. Welcome to control freaks that couldn't produce anything running your life. Oh, you don't want to date a tyrant? You don't want to serve a tyrant? They'll just take your society over and teach you to do what they say. That's what tyranny is, is a collection of scum, control freaks turned loose against you and your family. And e extremism in defense of liberty is no vice, to quote Barry Goldwater. Listen, my friend. Frank it up. That's right. Anybody that doesn't like tyranny, you need to go to a sanitarium. That's right. We're all crazy. We don't like tyranny. All right. Your phone calls are coming up in the next segment. Let me get into the big, big news for you. Oh, it, it, it's not this. UK banks abandon Eurozone over Greek default fears. We told you two years ago when all this started that it wouldn't be fixed, no matter how much money the Greeks paid. The EU is a system to bring every country into receivership. Their own founders have admitted that. Here's another one. Moody's threat to downgrade Italian debt raises Eurozone contagions. And the, the, the big private megabanks run our countries now through fraud. And don't worry, they're going to bankrupt every country in order right up to the U.S. and England when they're done. And they're going to own you because a bunch of crone-like, hunchback, New World Order people tell you what to do. And when they tell you what to do, you're going to do it because you don't want to be called an extremist. Uh, so there's some of the news on that front. Okay, let me get into the World War III situation. We've got a video that we uh, launched Friday afternoon that's got 200,000 views uh, on YouTube and was on the front page of YouTube till they took it down, part of their tactic to keep our information from going viral. But I shot a little video that we put out Friday uh, titled Obama Launching World War III. And then uh, it was overwhelmingly um, received in a positive nature. Because most people are extremist. Over 90% of Americans in polls believe that more than one person shot and killed JFK. 90 plus percent bad people, 9% good, reasonable, sane people. Thank goodness they run things, right? Okay, I'm sorry, uh, continuing here. But, but there were some people that were confused. And, 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 and so a lot of times I forget to put on my anthropology, sociology, psychology hat. Because I don't really wordsmith what I say. I don't really calculate my semantics. I really try to just tell the truth in an easily understood way, as best I can. And I saw some people saying, World War III, it's not the end of the world. There's not going to be a nuclear war. How could Alex say that? And I went, mm -hmm. well, wait a minute. From all my geopolitical research... World War III would be more than two regions involved in a prolonged conflict with more than 100,000 people dead, with the two sides being, packed, uh, being backed by one or more uh, groups as proxies. And I went to Encyclopedia Britannica. I went to Wikipedia. can't really trust them, but they just copied Britannica. I went to some other history books just to double-check my memory, and I was absolutely correct. In fact, I was only incorrect in one facet. The Pentagon, since 1991, has officially taught, and a lot of you have seen this on the news, it's just popularly stated, that the Cold War from 1947 until 1991, with perestroika and all the rest of it, was World War III. And that it was a Cold War fought with proxies. And I actually had those quotes here. I'm not just going to tell you that and then not go to the quotes. So when I say World War III, the only mistake is, and it wasn't a mistake, if I said World War IV, even more folks would have been confused. But to be technical, world from the position of the people that run our country, 
World War IV is now being kicked off. Um, and I did more research, and wow, found out I was more right than I'd even thought. I got ABC News, I've got Associated Press, uh, I've got uh, a bunch of reports here. Here's ABC News. Bush likens war on terror to World War III, he said during a television interview. Okay. But expanding on that, what is a world war? Is a war affecting the majority of the world's most powerful and populous nations? Well, these all these wars are affecting us through taxes, regulations, dead troops coming back in flag-draped coffins. World wars span multiple countries on multiple continents. Let me see. Africa, got the EU and the French and the Ivory Coast, got the U.S. and NATO and the French and the Germans. Well, the Germans just pulled out. Uh, in Libya, uh, you got the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, now expanding into Pakistan. You've also got that undeclared war going on for a decade down in uh, Colombia over cocaine money. So th there you go. And then it gets in large numbers of dead, over 100,000. Million dead Iraqis, conservative, uh, continues. The term has usually been applied to two conflicts, unprecedented scale, that occurred during the 20th century, World War I. 1914-1918, World War II, 39 to 45, although in retrospect, the number of earlier conflicts may be regarded as world wars. And it goes into the Napoleonic era and other things. Okay, uh, let me uh, actually in the world war section bring you to some of the quotes, and it has links uh, to the uh, Pentagon's uh, own statements uh, in there. Digging into it here, excuse me. I highlighted this. Oh, it must be in my World War III section. But I've got the... Uh, oh, here it is. Yeah, th yeah, this is the one. This is the one I highlighted. Here it is. Some analysts and historians have suggested that the Cold War can be identified as World War III because it was fought on a global scale by proxy combatants of the United States and later NATO and the Soviet Union and Warsaw Pact. Some neoconservative thinkers, including uh, Norman... Pod Horowitz have suggested, as well as the former CIA director, uh, that the uh, Cold War between the United States and Soviet Union in the mid-20th century should be considered World War III. On the other hand, in a 2006 interview, U.S. President George W. Bush likened the war on terror to World War III. And then it just goes on from there. Now, why am I going over this so much? Why is this, why is this so important? Because World War III in pop culture is seen as a war with the Communist Chinese or the Russians or both that results in mushroom clouds everywhere. But I want to be clear. The ongoing buildup for the invasion, the ground invasion of Libya, the ground invasion of Syria, uh, the drone attacks in Yemen, the uh, hostilities in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, all of that fits the bill of a giant world war. Call it whatever name you want, it's a world war, and it does, in their wargaming, lead to thermonuclear. Here's the deal. Uh, people think either in black and white geopolitically, either America good, Gaddafi bad, or Gaddafi good, America bad. No. Global mega banks want the trillions in oil and, and water that's there. They want control of it. It's on record now that they overthrew their former ally, Hussein Mubarak, in Egypt. Uh, that that Western groups and Google have been involved fomenting these revolutions. Well, I mean, any government could come to the U.S. and find a group of people that wanted to have an armed revolution. Would the U.N. then invade the United States if the government was putting down a foreign funded and led insurrection? I mean, think about this. And it's now admitted that they're going ahead with battle groups off the coast of Syria, that the West is in there. Same thing in Libya, same thing in Yemen. Everywhere, drone attacks. I mean, this is a major war. New new attacks every month of a new country. And they say, well, people are protesting and the government might have killed some of them, usually with no evidence. And then we're told, well, we've got to invade countries then if governments go after resistance movements. But then Israel shoots a bunch of people on their border, peaceful protesters. It's like, oh, how wonderful. Well, whether you think it's wonderful or not, it's hypocritical. And... These wars are being launched. Oh, I'm sorry, kinetic military actions. They're not wars. I forgot. Without Congress's approval. And 
It's unprecedented. And, and even Senator Al Franken's had to come out and say, Obama, you're supposed to get congressional approval. Even Bush did for his wars. Uh, you know, if the president sets a precedent where the military attacks who he says without congressional approval, we got a dictatorship here. You're like, well, I like Obama. Where are all you peaceniks who hated Bush for all these illegal wars? Where are you now? Well, he was given a peace prize. Well, why not give Adolf Hitler a peace prize then? Why not in the Star Wars universe give Emperor Palpatine a peace prize? After all, he tells Anakin, there will now be peace. This is a sick Orwellian joke. And uh, the German government has come out and said, this is illegal. We've confirmed with people on the ground. You're bombing major buildings. You're killing civilians. You are causing the humanitarian disaster. Well, we're only told, that, I mean, I got an email today saying, how dare you back Gaddafi when he had helicopters attack protesters? Where's the proof? Where's the proof? The same British government foreign secretary told us he ran to Venezuela. Turns out most of that's a lie. There are foreign observers there, and most of it's not true. I mean, Western media is allowed to drive around in major cities and videotape it, and Gaddafi's people leave him alone. I'm not saying Gaddafi's a good guy. I don't like big government, don't like dictators in clown suits. The point is, is that we were told Saddam threw babies out of incubators and stomped their brains out. That was later admitted to be a lie. I don't like being lied to. Imagine Al-Qaeda-backed groups on record a month before this stuff started were funded by the U.S. and British government to start the war with Gaddafi. He puts it, the, the Al-Qaeda rebellion down, and we're told you're an American if you don't back Al-Qaeda. And now they're saying that the U.N. sanctions are coming. There's already European Union sanctions on Assad and Syria, and there's U.S.-backed Kurds in one day killed over 100 Syrian police. Those are quite the protesters. <laughs> I mean, they go out with their U.S. issued rifles coming in, infiltrating out of uh, Kurdistan in the northern, northern Iraq area into northern Syria, northeastern Syria. They come in and they machine gun the police when they're coming out of restaurants, gas stations, sitting in their cars. And you're surprised that the Assad government is running around mur murdering people in mass. This is a full-on Western-backed destabilization overthrow. And if our criminal government's going to do this, they should at least be honest about it. But again, read my lips, no new taxes. I didn't have sex with that woman. Wiener didn't send the photo. Breitbart hacked him. None of it true. They lie and lie. And again, I'm an extremist. You know, uh, the heiress of Formula One, who's going to get part of the money... 250 million of Austin taxpayer money to pay for her own track. If I don't pay my property taxes, they send a SWAT team to my house to kick me out. If I resist, they kill me because I've got to pay her my money for her Formula One track. I'm an extremist. I should be thankful that foreigners come here and buy off our politicians and then they raise my taxes to pay for a Formula One track that they could pay for over and over again so she could have a $150 million mansion.